Welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to take a look at a photo of myself and my two little girls that my wife took of us on our trip to California back in 2014. Now, I actually like the fact that this is really blown out and, you know, kind of phase, fuzzy and whatever. Uh, it just tells a story that, you know, I handed my wife the camera and I didn't give very much instruction on how to use the camera and she took a really good photo and I love this photo because it's genuine to who we are as a family. Now, with that being said, I know that some of you may encounter a little bit of haze in your photos and we're going to take a look at getting rid of or editing this type of photo. So stay tuned. And here we are inside of the develop module. Now on this particular photo, when I click AI auto, it doesn't really do much. I'll turn the preview off and turn it back on. And I'm not a huge fan of it, right? So we're just going to go ahead and hit manual and we're going to go ahead and do this ourselves. Now, the first slider that most people will probably go for or go to grab is the haze slider. Now, when I pull the haze slider down, it's actually a little uh, weird, right? You start to get like these really strange artifacts and my daughter starts glowing, not what I want. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to where it was when we started. Now, the first place that you can start is with your camera profiles and you can, you know, if you shot this in RAW. Now, if you shot this in JPEG, uh, this is gonna be a really hard thing for you to deal with. But if you shot it in RAW, as you can see, this is helping a little bit with and i think i'm going to leave it on standard because standard seems to have the most contrast in the image so that's actually the first slider we want to mess with is our contrast so you can pull down on it and you can see it adds a little bit more of that haze but if you pull up on it it starts to bring that haze away now that's uh, where you want to start then we'll move down to the highlights and we'll try and recover some of those highlights because the sky is a little blown out uh, we were using ISO 100, but since it was so bright and shot at a 2.5, you know, that's just what you get. So now I want to actually bring my shadows down. And the reason I want to bring my shadows down is because uh, this particular camera is a crop sensor. And with the uh, megapixels, the way the sensor reads, whenever you bring the shadows down, you're actually bringing down a lot of the uh, midtones as well which is why I left my midtones alone on this particular image. Uh, and I could bring my midtones down a little bit more. And as you can see, I'm already getting into a usable image, uh, or at least the more desired or what you would imagine an image should look like. Now, I think that this image is a little soft, so I'm gonna bring a little bit of structure into the image. This is also gonna help bring in some of that contrast. So if I bring, this up just a little bit it is a portrait so i don't want to mess with it too much and now now i'll go ahead and bring in the haze all right now because of all of that the photo got a little bit dark and i can boost the exposure here but then i start to reintroduce that haze and i don't want to do that so instead what i'm going to do is actually bring highlight to us as a family in uh, a very unique way or just in a localized way I'm gonna hit the local button and this odd uh, this defaults to darken we'll click on lighten and I'm gonna bring this exposure down because I don't need that much exposure all right and then we're gonna open up shadows a little bit uh, and I think that's where I'm going to start so I'm gonna start with myself because I'm the darkest face out of the group of us uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and paint that and that doesn't look very natural so I'm gonna bring this down and I'm even gonna bring the opacity down and what I'm probably going to end up doing is making this adjustment just for my face so I'll bring the opacity down a little bit more there and bring in a little bit of structure because you know, you want your, your eyes to be sharp in photos, or at least the face, for sure. Uh, okay. I think I'm looking pretty good there. If I don't say so myself. I'm going to add a new adjustment. 
click on lighten again, bring this back down. I'm gonna bring up the contrast, open some shadows just a little bit. And this time I'm gonna paint on my daughter's face right here. And I'm liking the way that that looks. Let's see if I can get away with it on this, on her face. And looks like I can. So then I'm just gonna bring down my uh, overall opacity and turn it off and on. And as you can see, it brightens up their face, makes it look like we're overall uh, nice and pretty decently lit, right? Now, the last thing that I'm gonna do, just to bring this whole picture together, is add a vignette. The way that I add my vignettes is by adding a local adjustment and then coming up here to the gradient tool and making a strong vignette, click in the center, I'm going to drag this on in, drag this in, there we go, put it right there and then I'm just going to pull this out so it could feather. And now I feel like this is a good photo, it focuses in on us and it's really good. So this is the before, really blown out, no real attention and this is the after. Now. I could do a whole lot more editing, but this is really just a basic develop. You can restore an image if you shoot in raw. So if you found this video helpful, go ahead and smash that like button. If you like content like this, consider subscribing. And until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.